Hello everyone and welcome to my classroom. It's Teacher Marianne here from HelloTeacherMarianne.com. Here you will find videos all about helping you teach ESL online where I am passing on to you valuable tips, insight, and need to know information. Helping you make the most of this incredible work from home opportunity. Now go ahead and hit subscribe. Stick around until the end where I'm going to tell you about a freebie I have for you. In this video, we are going to cover what you need to know about setting up your online classroom. You may be thinking, what do I even need to start teaching ESL online? What is the necessary equipment? What are the non-negotiables? And then what are things that I can add on later if I decide to start teaching ESL consistently online? I'm going to answer those questions for you today as we talk about lighting, your teaching background or your backdrop, equipment, props, and rewards. I will leave all of my information in the description box below. Email me at helloteachermarianne at gmail.com if you've got any questions or you can simply go to helloteachermarianne.com and contact me through my website. I would be happy to help you through the hiring process to answer any questions. Maybe you're just thinking about this as a legitimate work from home opportunity. You just email me with any questions and any concerns. Okay, so first let's tackle lighting. But there's a little trick that I learned the hard way that I want to share with you before you go out and try a zillion different lights. First, make sure you have a great webcam. I just kind of thought that all webcams were created equal. Not so. And I had lamps and lights over my computer, around my computer, and I didn't understand. And my webcam was not good enough. I took the recommendation of so many other online ESL teachers and I got myself a Logitech C920. Everything was brighter. I think it was about 50 bucks. I'm going to link it below in the description box. It has worked beautifully for 3,000 classes. <laughs> Very much worth that investment. All right, so first thing with lighting is make sure you have a decent webcam. Once you know you've got a decent webcam, either internal webcam or external webcam, the next best trick that I learned was LED light bulbs. Now, a lot of teachers will invest in a ring light. Uh, there are a lot of teachers that say the ring light is too bright. Even when I put it over my computer, it hurts my eyes. Um, I literally have an LED bulb on a lamp without a lampshade right next to my computer. So I'm gonna pull it in front of the camera. All right, so this is, <laughs> There's my, there goes my phone. This is my LED bulb just right next to my computer. And then I also turn on this little lamp right here in the morning when it's dark in here in the early mornings and that shines on my background and that brightens up the back and it's just a single LED bulb and it's pitch dark in here when I teach in the mornings. And then I also just have a little fluorescent light um, that is right above my computer. So I've got the white lights going on, but I've just got those three little lights and um, LED bulbs are the way to go. In my opinion, I wouldn't invest in a lot of fancy lighting. I would just get me a couple of lamps with an LED bulb right next to my computer. Make sure you get the the cool or the white light, not the warm light. The warm light casts a yellowish glow and it kind of uh, makes things a little darker than the, the white lights or the cool lights. Um, that's my opinion. That's what I love and that's what I have found works the best. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about, we talked about lighting and now we want to talk about your background or your backdrop. What the students are going to see behind you back there as your teacher teaching them. Now, when I teach the students, the students just literally see that background behind me. They don't see what you're seeing on my phone, which is the periphery of my classroom here. Um, and so you just want to make sure that your background 
if, if the students, all they see is this background behind me, this teaching background, it looks professional and it looks educational. It looks inviting and welcoming. The kids actually can see the welcome. I'm just going to tilt the phone. They can actually see the welcome sign up there too. So they kind of get that square. Okay. I actually got all of this background like on clearance at a Hobby Lobby. Some teachers change their background for every season, for every holiday. I'm just not that teacher. <laughs> Once I get something on up there, I like until it starts peeling or coming down, um, I don't really change it. I'm just, it's not my thing. Um, but so I like to just make it really cute and something that I feel like I can live with for months on end. And uh, so this background, like I said, came from Hobby Lobby and it's actually just tape to a window. Most teachers have a map on their background. Uh, I will say that VIP Kid is very specific about the China maps that are used. So if you want a China map, just send me an email and I will shoot one over to you, one that's been approved from VIP Kid. You want to just kind of have your name in your background. Uh, of course, I've got the U.S. flag and I've got VIP Kid. Now, if I taught for multiple companies, I would just take that VIP Kid sign down. But I I don't. I have thought about getting established with one or two other ESL companies just to kind of diversify. I stay solidly booked with VIP Kid and I just do not have the time to add another company right now. So I just leave my VIP Kid sign up. So I just wanted to say about your background, if you don't have a wall or a window in my case, uh, a lot of teachers will just take a corner of a room and they will just kind of have um, some things on this wall and some things on this wall. This is the corner and they just kind of position their chair catty corner and where uh, the students will just kind of see the corner so they can see a little bit right here and a little bit right here. Uh, and that works beautifully. A lot of teachers just use the corner of, you know, the dining room, the living room, an office, a bedroom, you know, a spare bedroom or a closet or something like that. A lot of teachers also will um, use the portable backgrounds, science project like trifold boards or reading fair project boards that open up and then you can actually just prop that up behind you like on a chair or an easel. My first few classes I had the science board deal on top of my ironing board behind me and it worked fine. It totally worked fine. And then as the, as I knew this is this is going to be a permanent uh, you know job. This is this is good. This is going to work out. Um I just kind of made a permanent space, but your background can just be what you make it. It can be um, totally your style and your colors, and it just needs to be fun and welcoming and inviting and educational. Um, VIP Kid just really wants to see an educational, welcoming environment and background. They want it to look professional. Uh, and so that's really it. You just can go to town with your creativity if you're creative, um, or you can buy it all ready-made like I did at somewhere like Hobby Lobby or uh, Michael's or Target is a great place. So let's go ahead and talk about equipment. We've talked about lighting and we've talked about your teaching background, your teacher background, and now let's talk about equipment. And so the first thing that you obviously have to have is a computer or you can use an iPad with a VIP kit as well. I prefer the laptop because I like to type in my feedback as I'm teaching the classes. So when I click end class, I click submit feedback at the same time. And then after I teach my seven classes in the morning, I don't have to now go back and remember now what happened in that first class and look at and try to make sense of my notes. Um, so I love that feature, love it, love it. Because when you're finished with that class, you are finished. Okay, so a computer that's got either a built-in webcam or you've got an external webcam like the one I mentioned. You need internet service. If you're not sure if your internet is fast enough, then you just call up your internet provider and say, is my internet strong enough, fast enough to live stream? I actually have in my free classroom setup guide all of the specs so that VIP Kid has laid out um, exactly what internet um, 
I don't even know what to call it, but what does your internet have to be? What does the processor in your computer have to be? The webcams they recommend, you know, I just have all of that um, straight from VIP Kids website available for you. Okay, so for your equipment so far, we've got a computer and we've got a webcam either an external one or a really awesome internal webcam. And then the next thing that you need is a set of headphones. Uh, these are also Logitech headphones. Uh, let's see, they are um, H600, I believe is what they are. Logitech wireless headset, H600. I'll link that also in the description box below. And I love it, it just comes with this little USB right here and I just keep that plugged in and so I don't need any I don't need to deal with any wires um, they're very comfortable it's got this microphone it's got the um, the mute button so I can mute my sound between classes I can just press that mute button and I don't have to worry about like if I'm you know if I talk to my husband or you know one of my kids walks in the room or whatever I can just mute that I don't have to worry about um, my sound on the other end being heard uh, so these are and they're really comfortable and I think they were about 30 bucks on Amazon and they've lasted also about 3,000 classes with no problem. So well worth that investment. And then I, what I wanted to say about internet service is VIP Kid recommends and I completely agree and back this up to have a secondary internet service such as hotspot on your phone just in case you know we have a storm the internet goes out and so i know that at any time my internet stops working on my computer i can just choose the hotspot internet instead i can keep going with my classes and that has saved me several times i will say that the first time i didn't have internet and i had classes the next morning and I, I didn't know that I needed to call my phone service and have Hotspot added to my phone. I just thought Hotspot was something you got with your smartphone. I mean, that's how tech savvy I am. I learned the hard way that you have to call and request that service to be added to your plan. Luckily, everything worked out. Our internet was back on in the morning from the storm. However, that day I got Hotspot added to my plan. I never have to really worry if the internet goes out. And then the other thing is to have, have an iPad or a backup um, laptop that you can teach on. Before I knew to go in and select manual updates instead of automatic updates, one time my computer did begin updating in the middle of a class. And, there, and by, by that point I couldn't stop it. There was no... Um, nothing to do. I got a teacher IT, which basically means a teacher tech issue. So um, I didn't get paid for that class. And luckily by the next class, it was finished up. My computer was finished updating. But again, I went out and I got myself a trusty backup <laughs> so that if something happens to my computer, I have a secondary option and um, it'll it'll save you from not being able to get paid from those that class or those classes that morning if something were to happen okay so we've talked about lighting we've talked about your back drop or your background and we've talked about equipment which is basically all of these things are very basic not a lot that you need to start teaching and the next thing I want to talk about is props this is where I could really kind of go crazy just because I think they're so fun I have grabbed my kids toys from day one so I mean just whatever I have around the house I'm just going to tell you the props that I use most often so in the lower level twos balls you just like pretend you're throwing a basketball, throw it at them. Which ball do you like? And sometimes they'll say football, but they mean this because in China, this is football. And so you say American football or Chinese football. Which one? Oh, I like soccer. Something else that I often use, I'll just kind of like go off camera and come back with these on. And then that just gets them smiling and laughing. 
Another one that I use very often with the little ones, fish, fab, because we use crawl. Um, and then I always extend, do you like to eat crab? <laughs> Me too. Panda, because hello, China. Little frog, hop, hop, hop. Um, how does the frog move? The frog hops. What color is the frog? Green. Now I've got a ton of stuffed animals to choose from from our collection, but these are just the ones that I kind of go to often. I use this a lot for big, small. Then again, in the older levels, we teach the 3D shapes, and so I use this for sphere. Very common one that I'll use when teaching the weather and seasons is I'll just grab this scarf and we'll just put it on, and we'll talk about the scarf and when, what seasons do we wear a scarf. French fries. Another very frequently used set of props is this little basket of food. We just use food for so much. What color is it? What do you like to eat for breakfast? You like noodles or bread? Which one is a fruit? Which one is a vegetable? This really spans the levels because you can start out just teaching color and then you can advance your way up to, you know, the older levels where they're learning to categorize um, groups of things things in different ways. How many ways could we categorize this? And then I just wanted to show, okay, so this is from, I'm also a homeschool mom. Melissa and Doug makes this um, money set, and this is a really old one. Starting at level three and up, um, we will do a reward game called Jeopardy. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Jeopardy? <laughs> We'll play Jeopardy. Parents always love for us to bring in money. Another prop that I commonly use for everything under the sun is just a little whiteboard. I probably have five or six of these floating around. Whether you're working on blending and let's see you're blending the egg words, okay? Egg, egg, Ooh, egg, yes, hmm. Mmm, egg, yes. If you isolate the blend and then pop us uh, the beginning sound onto it, a lot of times it's just kind of helps that light bulb turn on. I have one student, one regular, who I teach um, three or four times a week and she loves to draw. I'll Google right before class, how to draw whatever easy. When I give her a star, I'll say, okay, let's draw. And I'll hold up the picture for her to draw on her piece of paper. And then I'll draw it on my whiteboard, but I won't show her. And at the end of the class, we show each other what we drew. And hers always looks way better than mine, but that's okay. That's the fun of it. The very last thing I'm going to show you um, of my most frequently used props, and I know I've shown you quite a few today, but I don't use all of these all the time. I don't even, some days I don't even use a prop. In seven classes, some days I do not even use a, a prop. I would say it's probably half and half. All of these little animals, again, from my kids' collections. We have um, jungle animals, what animals live on the plain, what animals live on the farm. Um, we have which ones are wild animals, which ones are domestic, animals that help us, um, animals that we eat. If I had to, to recommend investing in any props, it would probably be food and a few animals. So we've talked about lighting, we've talked about teacher backdrop, we have talked about equipment, we've talked about props, and now we're going to talk about rewards. Every single day, every single lesson, I use Google Slides for my rewards. You can go to Facebook and you request to join the official Google slide group for VIP kid. Once you join that Facebook group, then they'll walk you through the steps of how to get the Google slides on your phone or on your tablet. So in the morning I have seven classes. And so starting with my 3.30 class and it's one of my regulars, Grace, and our, our um, Lesson is exercising. So I just wrote 3.30, Grace exercising, 
find a star. So all I did was type in exercising on my Google Slides and it gave me lots of options and I chose the find a star. So I'll say in the beginning, Grace, when you do a great job, you can pick a number. And if she says seven, I'll touch the number seven. <gasps> You found a star. Good job, Grace. Maybe she picks number six next time, and number six is jogging. Grace, can you make a sentence with jogging? Two friends are jogging in the park. Grace is a higher level student, so that's totally a sentence that she might say. A lower level student, you might not even ask them to make a sentence. You might just say, oh, jogging. Yeah, jogging. Yeah. So again, I do use Google Slides for every class now for my rewards. It's just so easy. It just, in the Google Slides files that we have access to, there are over 7,000 rewards. And literally you just type in your keyword, what are you looking for? And it will give you a whole host of reward options. It's amazing. It is amazing. The teachers that just volunteer, create these Google Slides for us to use are just phenomenal. And there is a place on the app where you can tip them or thank them. They've saved so many of us so much time and money and effort and energy just by having ready-made rewards for every single lesson. However, if you are a teacher, maybe you're a new teacher and you're not ready to dive into Google Slides for your reward system yet, or maybe you just don't like that option, then you can just do a tangible reward. When you do a great job, you get ice cream and then just keep giving them a scoop of ice cream. It's another use for whiteboards. And you do a great job, you get money if you've got some play money lying around. Teacher versus student is a very popular game. I do all my teacher versus student games in the Google Slides, but you can also do this just with a whiteboard. So you write numbers one through six or one through 10, whatever numbers you wanna use. If they're higher level, then you could write 11 through 20, um, and then just write your numbers on a whiteboard like this. And then you just cover each of those numbers with a sticky note and you say, okay, Grace, pick a number for you. And she says, I want number five. <gasps> Five, Grace, you got six points. So I put a little G. Grace, pick a number for me. Hmm, three, okay. Five, I got five points. So I put a little M by five. And then we just play and we tally up our points at the end. Whoever gets the most points won the teacher student game for that day. Using that same concept, you could turn these sticky notes into money amounts. You could make this $10 or $100 and be sure you write your dollar sign. So Grace, when you do a great job, you earn money. Which one? $50. Which one lays eggs, mammals or birds? Tally up your money amounts at the end. That's one variation. There are so many different variations that you could do with Jeopardy, teacher versus students and that sort of thing. Another thing you could say is when you do a great job, you get an animal. Pulling out your animals. Is this an animal that helps us? A chicken. How does a chicken help us? Yes, a chicken gives us eggs. Very good. Another really great um, reward you can say, when you do a great job, I'll ask you a question, okay? So just kind of depending on their level would be um, how you determined your uh, questions. What is your favorite color? <gasps> Red, great, I like red too. Then keep teaching. If it's an older level student, then you could ask them, um, what is your favorite thing to do in your free time? And then your next questions can just build on that throughout the lesson. Who do you play badminton with? 
Where do you go to play badminton? How often can you play badminton? So you can just, one little theme, I'm just jotting down on my little whiteboard and they don't even know it. And then at the end, I'll say, Grace, you did such a great job today. And I had so much fun learning about you. I learned that you love to play badminton with your mom, that you go to the stadium to play badminton, and you play every Sunday. Wow, that's so cool to know about you. The student really feels like you know them better and they just love sharing that information. I'm telling you that the, the best part about this reward is being able to say back to them what they said to you and you're saying, I heard you, I understood you, I know you better now, we've got this connection. It works beautifully. So it's probably my favorite reward that cost nothing. I hope this video was super helpful. We talked about lighting. We talked about our teacher background. We talked about equipment. We talked about props and we talked about rewards. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a like. Please share it with somebody who also may benefit. Okay, so I promised you a freebie and here it is. If you go to helloteachermarianne.com, scroll all the way to the end and click the button that says sign up here to get my free online classroom setup guide. Enter in your email and I will send that free guide over to you and it's got all the helpful tips that we talked about in here today. I look forward to connecting with you. Remember, you can do this and I'm your biggest cheerleader. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.